Hello everybody, you have tuned in to Eric Jose on Making a Murderer on YouTube. I cover virtually any aspect of Making a Murderer. I go over the evidence, the documents, the photos. So if you'd like, stay tuned and in the future I'll have many more videos besides the one you're about to see. How you doing today we're here talking about michael funk okay you guys have heard me talking about him recently i posted some videos okay so michael funk is you know was unfortunately gunned down by a police officer who was responding to a hostage situation at his business and you know and that sort of thing and, and those of you who watch the videos you know what's going on with it basically right well what i'm uploading here is basically a conversation i had over on ali's channel in a, in a hangout with several other people, Denise Rainey, Sam William Henry 582, or Jamie, uh, Julie Pom Pom, uh, Allie, of course, uh, and Linda, Linda, you know. Uh, so we were all in there having this chat, and, and so I had mentioned Michael Funk in the live chat. I had gotten I'd just gotten home, and I mentioned it in the live chat, and they were like, oh, what's that? And Allie actually started Googling it, and started like finding some information about it and everything and so i was like hold on and so as soon as i got home i had to eat real quick and then i joined the hangout and so this is going to be the bit where i join and i gotta warn you folks i get a bit passionate sometimes when i'm talking about things because when i when i sense extreme bs um in somebody who should be a trusted you know source or a trusted person and and I'm and I just continue to sense extreme BS. It just it really gets like under my skin. So in this video, and I do apologize to those of you who find it upsetting, but in this video, I did let what I refer to as a couple of fire trucks here and there fly, or as some might say, an f bomb. Um, but yeah, you know, yeah, this one's got it's got a, a few fire trucks in it, so. Um, I do apologize, like I said, in advance for that, but it, they were only coming out because I was passionate ab about what I was talking about and, and they were just kind of coming out the way they did. And, uh, so I decided to leave them because they, they felt right at the time. So I figured maybe I better just leave it. So, like I said, for those of you who find it, uh, um, uh, you know, not to your taste. I do apologize. Not it wasn't any anything I intended. So, anyways, getting to it. Here we go. This is me explaining Michael Funk to many members of the Wrecking Crew there in the hangout, and also people who were watching the live chat at that time. All right. So, you guys yeah, want to find out about Michael Funk? Yeah, this sounds interesting. Consider so we just I have two some videos. Pregnant woman get shot. Yeah, I have two videos about it. You guys can check out. I posted them in here, but. You know, I'll, I'll I'll post them on my Facebook page, uh, Eric Jose Facebook page uh, after this. But so what happened is is in Nina, this gentleman. Some might debate whether or not he was a gentleman. He was he was a biker. He, he owned a cycle shop. Um, you know, so he had wait kind of like a fringe member of society in a certain way. You know wait. what I mean? Wait. Sorry. My daddy's a biker. Right. Watch your mouth. So am I. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying good or bad. I'm saying the way okay. society right. will exactly. perceive that you. sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, and and there's a reason why I say it because it leads into something else that's actually kind of interesting about this case. So, he had this motorcycle shop in Nina, and apparently the word is Nina was looking to get him out of there. They didn't want him to be in that cycle shop anymore. That they they would have they wanted they wanted to get him out so that they could bring somebody else in who was going to do it up and make it into like a family restaurant or whatever because they wanted to clean up Nina kind of was the idea right and and they just didn't like the element I guess is the word they would use right coming in coming through the cycle shop and all that sort of stuff so so there that's just something to think about as you're going to hear this story of what happened okay Stereotype. that's just something in the background to think about okay so. What happens is one day this idiot flat off comes up into the cycle shop with a gun 
He's firing it. He's scaring the hell out of people. Funk is the owner of the shop. And uh, two other, I think it was two other people were in there with him. And they were, you know, they were all scared, basically, and everything. This guy was holding them hostage. Somehow, at some point, Funk, through talking to Flat Off and through coordinating with somebody else, getting uh, one other person just saying things to him, Funk is able to slip out. He slips down the back hallway, and he, he heads for the back door to get out into the back alley. And he, he succeeds. He's, I mean, you see him in the video. He literally comes diving out of the back door doing like a somersault, rolling sideways. You can see where like a shot hits like the door jam or something because you see like some stuff fly. So this guy's getting fired upon, okay, from inside, okay? Wow. And he ends up going and he hides behind this. There's like little truck back behind the, the shop. So he hides behind this truck. What he doesn't know, what Michael Funk doesn't know, is that there is a freaking riot officer fucking guy right behind him, hiding behind a corner behind a building, but Michael Funk doesn't know this. Michael mm. Funk is just in a fight for his life, right. okay? He, he's dealing with what's in front of him, and what's in front of him is a fight for his life because yeah, that guy bullet. was just firing at him, right? So he has no idea this cop's there. He, 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 he hunkers behind the truck for about maybe 10, 15 seconds, and then he looks to move away because he wants to get away from the guy who's shooting at him. The moment he turns to try to get away, as soon as he turned 90 degrees to the officer, the officer unloads on him. He goes down. The officer that's across the way, he's like about 100 yards away with a sniper rifle. He starts firing into him. Michael Funk had almost 18 gunshot wounds in him. Oh, my God. Before it was said and done. Oh my! God. Okay, eighteen fucking gunshot wounds. And okay? he's trying to get away <laughs> now. To answer Ali's question, did he have a gun? Yes, he was in a gunfight with the that, guy who was robbing his store. That makes absolutely. He was getting robbed. He was getting robbed. The guy was holding. He wanted. He had a dispute with Michael over a motorcycle and all these other things or whatever. And he was coming there to get what he felt he was owed. Essentially, that's what this flat off guy was there. He was just there, a drunk, an idiot, probably has mental health issues, whatever it is. And that's how he was coming to settle the score. Mm. So Michael Funk, yes, did have a handgun in his hand because it's his business. Doesn't, you know, that's really not all that shocking. No, uh, you know, not at all. And, and so, yes, he did. But literally, the moment he gets 90 degrees, the cop doesn't warn him, like, freeze or don't move or give him any chance, any opportunity. No fucking opportunity to realize the situation that he are okay. Oh, I, you know, because if a, if an officer said to, that to me in that situation, yeah, I would have. I would have said, oh yes, oh okay, boom, drop the gun immediately. I'm covered. The officer has me covered, so I'll just let him do it. You know and what I mean? True. But he wasn't even given that opportunity. So here's the worst part of it: when you listen to this video, truth and you hear these guys trying to explain the what they did. That I was going to. Truth right. Monster just asked the same question I okay. was going to. What is it? What What the hell was a sniper doing there? Well, that... it's just another officer. He was he, the where he set up was so far away. He had to use. I don't. It might not have been a sniper rifle. It might have just been a long range rifle. But he had like a laser scope on it, and he was recording. But even was... even still, right there, th th this gives reason for research. Because well, because it was a standoff situation. You know, SWAT was already all around. So this this officer okay, was just okay. now in that a makes position sense. where he was, right? That makes and sense. And once, once the one officer shot and fired, this guy just started firing too. And he fires oh, yeah. like probably five or six shots into Michael Funk. Now, to get at what the part that really fucking grinds my gears is the fucking asshole cops say, well, he was still moving. Of course! Fucking, of course he was still fucking moving, you assholes. You fucking Ooh. fire a fucking piece of lead into somebody, and they're going to fucking move, you fucking idiots. I mean, yeah, so you can tell that one gets at me a little bit. Anyway. Good. <laughs> oh, my God. That's that's. Awful. He kept that's moving. Awful. Oh, he fucking didn't just say that. Oh, my God. <laughs> this whole thing is on video? It's, I Yeah, it's in the two videos I posted, I have two different segments. I have the segment of what happened to Michael Funk, and then in the second video is a body cam video of officers 
listening to the asshole that first shot Michael Funk, listening to the fucking things that that asshole says, and this asshole still got off scot free, no consequences. What did he say? He's he's saying things like, <laughs> like, yeah, I shot one, I shot one. Like he's all proud of himself, and he and he already knows it was the owner of the business, and that and that it wasn't a good kill, and he's still proud of it. Fucking insane! Oh, wow, it's wow. fucking insane. That that <laughs> that pissed me off. Yeah, the second one with the body cam footage of this guy, and the fact of the matter is, he shouldn't even have been there. Because when they first tried to go in, before Michael Funk got out, the riot squad tried to go in. They tried to enter through that back door. And when they were trying to go down that hallway, Flat Off started opening up fire on them. Well, the particular cop that shot Michael Funk, that came back and eventually shot Michael Funk, was, was in that raid and got hit on the helmet by one of, Michael, by one of Flat Off's bullets. By all rights, shouldn't have been there. He should have been removed from duty pretty much at that point, or at least from that situation at that point, because even with a helmet on, he could have a concussion. He could have, you know, certain things could be going on with his mental processes. And so, and that, and you actually hear in the second video, you hear one of his, one of his like higher ups saying like, Oh, Hey, wait, didn't you, you, you should be over at medical. Cause he remembers that he got shot in the opening raid. He goes, Hey, wait, you should be over at medical. He goes, what do you, what would you do if you shot someone? And that's when he says, I fucking did. And he's like all proud of himself. And he's like bragging. And you can tell that's this higher up is like looking at him so and just going, then he felt oh, you are all kinds of Because cookies. he got shot, so he's going to retaliate. That's bullshit. That's, well, it, and, it, and there may be some amount of that to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I he was, he's was taking it out on Michael Funk, even though Flat Off's the one that fucking offended him. Right. He didn't you know? care. It was going to be eye for an eye. See, and we had a case that pops out. We had a case here in in, uh, in North Dakota, of and you you could watch it because we had on YouTube. We had uh, officers from across the all the United States that came up here for this. We had an officer that was shot by a crazy guy. Right. And I, I mean, it, it did devastate the community because he was an upstanding officer. And, and we all know that there are good officers out there. We all know that. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. There, yeah, but yes, there are there are some bad situations that have happened. Um, and th th this cop was was literally shot in the head by a guy who had gotten out of prison. I can't remember the how long ago he did, mm -hmm. but. He'd, he'd already been to prison and gotten out and all of a sudden freaked out and they blocked off like, I want to say like seven blocks. And uh -huh. we lost, we lost a good officer because of this. It, it so it, it, you could flip flop things. No, I'm, I'm not saying what, what happened here is, but right. you, I mean, there's both sides of it for everybody. I, well, yeah. The Sounds fact like of the matter is, is I, I, as much as I can understand the the law enforcement side of it, I, T1. I'm going to let Linda speak here real quick, but my bone to pick with this situation is protocol. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. Go ahead, Linda. Sorry. She's telling me to go now. <laughs> T1, be right back. Battery chains. Okay, Give me so an AC minute. Yeah, so that's what I was my, my bone to pick. And, and what I mean by that, by protocol, what I mean by that is the officer that shot Michael Funk should have done something a little different, okay? Yeah. I don't expect him to announce his presence and walk up to the guy with open arms and, and you know, whatever, right? But I, I mean, if he could have been hiding behind his, you know, corner there and, like, had his weapon trained and, and just said, drop the weapon or, yeah. you know, something, something. like that. And if, if Michael Funk reacted by dropping the weapon, then yeah. you might have had an opportunity to end that in a peaceful way. Well, yeah. more peaceful than it was. You know what I mean? Well, so he, why and, and so why why wasn't it why wasn't this guy unable to do just that small little thing? And people try to come back at me with, well, but then he announces his presence and then he's at a disadvantage. Fuck. What? Oh, He's at no. a disadvantage hiding behind a corner in fucking riot gear and bulletproof armor and shit oh. like that? Are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? No. I don't. But, <laughs> I, this guy's got a <laughs> to him. 
He's yeah, gonna you got fucking another officer across the courtyard with a fucking long range rifle who's ready covering that guy, and I'm yeah. supposed to somehow believe that the officer's in danger. What? Well, what he, happened to the guy inside? Eric, the place Eric the Cozy, place. here's here's the one thing that j- just what you said about what he, how he reacted. If right. he would have reacted like, "Holy shit, I I just shot somebody. Like I killed somebody. Oh my god!" Yeah. Some fucking yeah. Yeah. devastated because he had to yeah. do that. That'd be a different different story right but yep. the yeah. guy's got his back to him until he turns around how's he supposed to know that the that officer he, is yelling yep. at him in, if he could hear him at all Bunk hardly took his eyes off that back door he probably half expected flat off to come running out of it I and was, after 10 or 15 that? seconds and he realized flat off wasn't going to do that he's finally going okay i can get away from here no boom 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you finally you finally escape the guy the guy that's attacking you and now you're being shot at by by the people who's supposed to be protecting you. I mean that's how well, sad just it like is. That woman, just like that woman from Australia, she's coming to them for for help from the stalker raper, and she gets shot and killed. Right. <laughs> at least he's going to jail. I mean that cop lost. He's going to jail. And they got so, what they wanted, didn't they? They got rid of him. Yeah. Where another, huh? What happened to the guy that was inside this place? That flat whatever. Flat off did, ended up getting found guilty. <laughs> it only took like a day, literally like a day. The jury came back. He was guilty. I mean, and that guy needs to go away. He's you know that guy's all kinds of got issues right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm actually a little bit more worried about the uh, the police officer who is actually still allowed to carry a fucking weapon. I'm more worried about that guy. That's that guy what I say. Has license to carry around a firearm, and I don't think one belongs in his hands. That's what I say. With these cops, sure. they need to lose their job and not be an officer of the law anymore. You know, I mean, fine. So you don't go to prison or whatever, but you don't need to be carrying a gun and out there trying to do this again. Or, or you know, you're a danger. You're, you're, you're something wrong in your head when you're just going to whip it out and shoot somebody like that pregnant woman we just watched. I mean, that guy lost his he just went nuts. The woman was unarmed. She's on the ground. You have a flashlight in your hand. She's waving her hands like this. He just backs up and just boom, 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 shot her. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the, the problem is, Linda, is you could watch videos all day long about situations like this happening across the U.S. And a couple I, I, of people there in Australia have, have brought up that their laws are a little bit different. But in the in the U.S., the, the, the problem that we've got it, is that many cops know, especially in certain regions, that so many are, are concealed carriers. Though Those aren't the guys that you need to worry about. But no, they're not. But they're, they're, they're doing it legally. But there's others out there that are carrying without the, all the proper paperwork. Right. But we, them are the guys that aren't going to tell you they have a gun. Oh, mm-hmm.